Okay, the first part of the crystal, growing a nice large single crystal requires the growth of a seed crystal from which you'll grow your large single crystal. All right, now this is going to be based on a competition which uses 100 grams of potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate, and uh, that's this container right here. And we've gone ahead and weighed out 100 grams of the material. Uh, we also see here we have a Pyrex beaker that is safe to heat. Uh, full of 700 milliliters of distilled water. Now this volume of water is uh, should be adequate to be able to uh, dissolve the 100 grams of alum nicely uh, once it gets heated. Uh, if you're doing this at home or at school, you're gonna wanna make sure that you choose a container uh, that it is safe to heat water in. All right, so this could be a pot or a pan, or again, uh, some sort of Pyrex glassware. Uh, one nice thing we have here is a magnetic star bar. Uh, of course, you can use a spoon or you know some other uh, glass rod to stir your solution while it's heating. And the final thing I have here is, an, uh, is something we call a glass crystallization dish. Uh, um, you'll also want to find yourself some sort of a vessel that you'll pour your warm crystallization solution into and set it aside so that you can begin to grow nice seed crystals. Uh, you don't need one of these dishes, you just need any kind of a container uh, which will hold this uh, volume of water. So this is where for the crystallization part you can use uh, canning jars or uh, really just about just about anything. So we'll go ahead and get this started. So the first thing we'll do is add our magnetic stir bar to our water. All right. And uh, so here we go, 700 milliliters of distilled water. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on this hot plate and we'll get this, uh, get this stirring. Okay. Now it's important to note that I am using uh, deionized water. for this uh, part of the experiment. You don't wanna just use tap water uh, because uh, uh, tap water contains lots of minerals and, and things. Okay, so we have this going. This is starting to heat. And now we're going to very gently add our 100 grams of alum. Now, if you're doing this for a competition, it's gonna, it's really important that you get all that alum out. So you're gonna wanna try and get a squirt bottle and go ahead and squirt out the inside of your container to make sure you get all that alum out and into the container. Now, if you add a little bit too much water to the solution, it's okay because uh, uh, the only thing that that's, the only effect that's going to have is to, is to allow, is to have the experiment take a little bit longer than it would otherwise. Okay, so here we go. We have our alum added. Uh, the hot plate is warming up. We have our stir bar going. The solution is stirring. And now we're simply going to wait for the solution to heat up um, and become nice and crystal clear. Uh, that way we know that all of the uh, alum, the potassium aluminum, in this case again, potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate, has fully dissolved in the solution. And we'll be ready to then add it to our dish so that we can let it start crystallizing. Okay, so we just finished uh, heating our solution. The solution clarified. Uh, you saw it go from sort of cloudy to, uh, to basically perfectly clear. You could see that stir bar spinning in there, no problem. All right, and, and here it is. And really, it didn't have to get very warm in our case, right? This is clearly, no, this water is not uh, boiling. It's, it's really not that hard. We just had to gently heat it to make sure that we got all of that alum to dissolve. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the stirring and the heating. 
we're now going to want to transfer our uh, crystal growth solution to our crystallization container. Now, truth be told, we could probably, we could certainly just let this cool in this container and uh, try and get the crystals to grow that way. Now, when you're wanting to grow seed crystals, it's nice to actually have a nice flat, wide dish because uh, uh, you're going to want to try and grow nice, single, isolated crystals. If you have a very tall, skinny container, you may get nucleation of crystals, but if they grow together, they're not really going to be very suitable for use in growing nice, large, single crystals. Again, that's the name of the game with these competitions, large, single crystals, okay? So here we go. We have uh, our solution, it's nice and clear. Again, at this stage too, when you're doing the transfer, if you wanted to, you could also filter it at this point, right? What we're trying to get is a clear solution, and again, the cleanest possible solution. That's why we use that deionized or distilled water in our initial setup. So we'll go ahead and take this, and we will just go ahead and now pour it into our crystallization dish. leaving behind the stir bar. All right. Now, uh, because this is a competition, you want to make sure that you got all that alum in there. So it doesn't hurt to squirt in a few extra milliliters of water to really try and rinse things off and make sure you get all every last little bit of alum out of there. All right. Okay. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm setting these up is, uh, you know, really uh, to have a, a handle on how much uh, water is present, I like to go ahead and take a marker and make a line right at the water level here, okay? So there it is. I'm going to make a line. So as this dish sits here, water is going to evaporate, and once we really hit that solubility point, crystallization will begin. Uh, by putting a line here, that lets me know that if I wanted to return to this state, this starting state, uh, this tells me how much water I would have to add uh, to get back to sort of where I started, right? Um, I can also take a look at this, and this water level is going to be going down over the course of the ne few, next few hours, few days, and I can also make a line when I start to see the very first crystals grow, right? This again gives me a uh, sort of an empirical way to determine the amount of water I need and uh, how much water, uh, you know, at what water level will uh, nucleation and crystallization begin. So uh, we'll go ahead and let this sit. You'll notice it's sitting on, this is a styrofoam pad. It's to sort of thermally insulate uh, our container from the countertop. Um, at home, one tip at home is that crystals generally really like to grow in dark, noise-free environments. So under, uh, in cabinets and things like that are ideal places to grow crystals. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna grow on this countertop, but I am actually uh, using this styrofoam to help insulate it from the temperature of the counter and give it a little bit of a cushion to sit on so that there aren't too many vibrations. And uh, so, uh, Next up, we'll see how, uh, how and when these crystals start growing. Okay, here we are a few days later, actually almost four days later. Um, that solution that we set aside has now been crystallizing. And in fact, we have some crystals in here. And so today we're going to harvest a few of these crystals, and I'll just point these out. You see a large crystal here, it's well isolated, that's the reason for using the large uh, uh, flat dish. Uh, this gives crystals the opportunity to grow and get larger without bumping into other crystals. And that's what you see on the edge here, we have a bunch of crystals um, that have all run into each other. And these won't really be good for growing very nice large single crystals, whereas this crystal is really ideal. And so when it comes to harvesting, we'll harvest that crystal and a few others. And those will serve as the seed crystals for the large crystal growth part of the uh, experiment. To retrieve the crystals, we're just going to use a ordinary pair of tweezers to gently pluck the crystals out of solution, and we'll also rinse them off with a bottle 
uh, just give them a quick rinse off with a little bit of deionized water. So here are the crystals that uh, ultimately I pulled from the solution. Uh, we see the cluster of five on the left and the, really the best crystal, the largest crystal of the highest quality is shown right here on the right. Um, it's a crystal that has excellent optical clarity. The faces are very nice and well defined um, and it's really pretty large. You can see it's already almost the size of a quarter. Uh, so this is going to be the crystal that we will ultimately use in the uh, growth of the large single crystal. Now I have uh, my own personal technique. I like to set aside a few other test crystals because what we'll be doing next uh, uh, there is a chance that we will uh, lose our crystal.